And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Thursday, November 21st. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to hit that super chat button. If you want to see me acknowledge any thought or comment you may have throughout the live broadcast, makes the show more lively, more entertaining between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. We appreciate you guys' viewership each and every day, so any contribution you can make to the show means the world to us as we put out content for you guys each and every day. And also, the other way to help out the show is by going to the link at the bottom of the show segment on the ticker, gsmcpodcast.net. That is gsmcpodcast.net. So, let's get into what we are going to discuss for today. So we're going to start off the show. We're going to preview tonight's game between the Steelers and the Browns in AFC North showdown. Steelers, of course, are in first place. The Browns are in last place. But that does not necessarily mean that this game is going to be lopsided. Also, you have to worry about the weather conditions as well for tonight. So we'll get into that. Um, we'll also talk about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I know he's been, him and the Jets have been the topic of conversation this week. But I just wanted to get into looking at some of the possible teams that he could land with if he continues to play and he's not the Jets quarterback in 2025. Uh, we'll also talk about Mike McCarthy and his comments on the Cowboys' most recent loss to the Texans. We'll get into the Bengals, and um, we'll talk about Zach Taylor, the head coach, and his comments on what Jamar Chase said after the game against the Chargers on Sunday. And then we'll also talk about the Giants and how there are some people in the organization that aren't that happy some players within the organization that weren't necessarily happy about the benching of Daniel Jones so we'll get into all that as well so let's get into the first topic which is talking about the Steelers and the Browns so of course the Steelers coming off of that big win against the Ravens on Sunday they are in sole possession of first place in the AFC North and then you have the Browns who are coming off of that loss against the Saints where Taysom Hill had three touchdowns in that game and they ended up losing I believe the score was 35 to 14 and Jameis didn't really play that bad in that game uh, he was pretty good but the Browns defense just did not show up yeah Jameis finished with 395 yards passing and two touchdowns so he was good um, but like I said Browns defense just could not stop the Saints and like I said Taysom Hill had three touchdowns in the game as well uh, we have Diggs, BTW7 in the chat saying, what's up? What's going on? How are you? And, yeah, so kind of going back to the game here. So, yeah, Steelers coming in at 8-2. and two, Browns coming in at 2-8. and eight. It's been a disappointing season for them. Um, this was a team that I thought was going to be better, and it just has not been the case. Uh, everything that could go wrong went wrong for them. And, you know, now you got James Winston at quarterback. Now, I did see him win that game against the Ravens, which was exciting. But since then, back-to-back -back losses to the Chargers and, to, and then to the Saints. Now, I do think the Browns have a good chance of winning this game tonight um, just because it's a divisional matchup. And I know they're 2-8, and eight, but this team still has talent. And the Steelers... You know the fact that they're eight and two. I, I didn't expect that. I expect them to expected them to finish with a winning record. Just I didn't expect them to be eight and two at this point. They have exceeded expectations. But you know this game could be close. Just from the standpoint of you know the Browns are at home, and I I don't think Russell Wilson as well as he's played, even though he didn't play that good against the Ravens. I I don't believe that the Steelers are going to wipe the floor with the Browns tonight. I just I, I just don't think that. Now the other thing, like I said before you have to worry about is the weather. Uh, the weather is going to be a factor in this game. Um, right now, it's 36 degrees in Cleveland, and it's going to be a rain and snowy mix tonight as I'm looking at the weather here. Um, you got 35% chance of rain at 4 o'clock, then 40% chance of snow at 5. Um... Then it could be a mix at 6 o'clock. Then 7, 45% chance of snow. Then it's back to rain. And then it's going to be cloudy the rest of the night. So maybe, you know, the precipitation might not be 
um, throughout the entire game. But still, it's it, it could it, it's going to play a factor. And then also uh, looking at the wind as well. Um, so it could be a ground and pound game tonight. And what was interesting last week for the Browns is that uh, Nick Chubb did not have a heavy workload, which, you know, they're still trying to ease him back into things. Um, but supposedly it was intentional that he did not have a heavy workload. But the Browns are going to need him tonight um, if throwing the ball is not going to really be an option. Um, he has not been great so far since he's come back, but I can't sit here and say that, you know, I'm surprised that he hasn't been good because he's coming off of a gruesome knee injury. And he will be facing off against the team that he got hurt against last year for the first time. And Chubb did comment on that and said it's just another game, um, which it is. Uh, you, you know, it's not like the the Steelers were intentionally trying to hurt him. It was just, it was a freak play. And, you know, he unfortunately got hurt. And he's trying to work his way back. Um, so it is just another game. For him so the the Browns are going to have to rely on him if they're not going to be able to throw the ball same thing with the Steelers you know rely on Najee Harris and Jalen Warren um, who have done a nice job this year now looking at the injury report so I believe they were I don't know if Najee Harris was all right so Najee Harris isn't on the injury report and Jalen Warren is not so yeah you're gonna have to rely upon those two guys as well um, and play good defense, which, you know, I, I think both defenses, well, the Browns defense didn't do that good, but the Steelers, their defense pretty much has been good all year. So, you know, you expect them to travel and, you know, make their share of plays in this game, maybe force some turnovers. Um, right now the Browns are just trying to play for pride. That That's really what they're trying to do here. Um, but it's just been a uh, it's been a disappointing season for them. So kind of looking at the league rankings for both of these teams, um, the Steelers in terms of passing yards per game they're 27th, the Browns are 18th, and then rushing yards per game, Browns are actually 29th. Um, and you figured, you know, it hopefully will get better with Chubb being back and hopefully he can, you know, have a better uh, last you know, six weeks here. And the Steelers are eighth, though. They're averaging 136.7. And like I said, if weather's going to be a factor, running game is going to be a factor in this game. Points per game, Steelers are 15th, the Browns are 31st. Then defense, both teams around the same when it comes to the pass. Uh, the Browns are 17th, Steelers are 20th. Against the run, the Steelers are actually fourth, giving up an average of 90.8 rushing yards per game. And the Browns are 24th. And then points allowed, Steelers' defense is second, and the Browns' defense is 24th. Yeah, Browns' defense has been kind of disappointing this year. Because that was supposed to be, you know, one of the strengths of the team, and it just, it, it hasn't. Um, but we'll see what happens in this game. I, I think this game, right now the over-under is 37. I might, if I was, was going to bet this game, maybe take the under. Um, because I mean, this game could be like, you know, a 17 to 10 game or something, or like, you know, 20 to 16, something like that. But, um, yeah, so maybe I would take the under if the weather was better, if it was a clear night, then, you know, maybe you would say take the over, but my, I, my guess is take the under. That's what I would say, but. Don't listen to me, because then you, know, you I, I might end up being wrong. So, I actually think the Steelers will win. I have the Steelers winning. The Browns are three and a half point underdogs. I know I said the score might be seventeen to ten, or twenty to sixteen, something like that. But I, I I'm gonna take the Browns with the points being at home. So maybe this is going to end up being a three-point game. Maybe 16-13, something like that. Just throwing out a bunch of random numbers. Um, it's an AFC North matchup. 
you know, and, and sometimes these games, no matter what the records are, you know, it'll end up being close. I mean, look at the Browns when they beat the Ravens. You know, who saw that coming? I thought the Browns would play good in that game with Jameis being a quarterback. I didn't think they were going to win. But, uh, you, you know, as, as good as Russell Wilson has been, like I said, I feel like this could be a game where he does struggle a little bit. Browns defense take his, takes advantage of that. Um, I think both defenses just keep this game close. Um, and also the other thing, too, is with the weather is how is that going to impact, you know, kicking field goals? Chris Boswell has been awesome this year. Is this going to be a scenario where, you know, teams are going to have to go for it more and, you know, attempting extra points? Are they going to have to go for two? Like, we'll, we'll have to see. Um but I, I think the Steelers win a close contest here. And they improve to 9-2 and two on the season. Which, I mean, that to, to be 9-2 and two at this point, if they're able to win, I mean, they, it pretty much guarantees them the playoffs, in my opinion. Um, I know they got some tough games coming up. But the Browns, I think, they should be able to sweep them, and if not, split. And, you know, you got the Bengals twice still, but I think they could at least split with the Bengals. That three-game stretch between Week 15 to Week 17 is really going to show us what the Steelers are made of because they'll take on the Eagles in Philly, the Ravens in Baltimore, which they beat them already in Pittsburgh. Well, let's see how they play against them in Baltimore. And then the Chiefs at home on Christmas. That will tell us a lot about the Steelers and how good they actually are. Now, I think they are a good team. I had them in my top five yesterday. But, you know, let's see what they could do later in the year when they have to go on the road and also play Kansas City at home. Let's see. But they're in first place. And give them credit where credit is due. And let's see what happens tonight. So I got the Steelers winning. Let me know what you guys think about this game. Who do you think wins tonight? Let me know in the comments. So we are going to take our first break of the show. And then when we come back, we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, some of the possible teams he can end up on if he does not return to the Jets and he does play next season. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 